Hi everyone, I thought it would be good to do a page from Nice Little Town Halloween um, this month. Seems pretty appropriate, doesn't it? Now I've picked this page here, now there's plenty going on in the page um, with various different Halloween-y type images which means that even if you don't have this book it might just give you a few hints and tips for things. We've got our little cute witch, we've got a cauldron, we've got a pumpkin, things like that. That's why I picked this page so that if you don't have the book you can still do, you know, have a look and, and get some ideas. Um, we're going to come in now and start down here at the bottom. I'm thinking cauldron first. Now I'm using my Pablo pencils. I've got no idea how they're going to work on this paper. I've not tried them before. Um, but if you don't have them, don't worry, because I do have in my Kofi shop a couple of um, charts comparing the colours to polys and to prismas. So if you have those instead, you can do that. Or you can just, you know, do something really similar. Now cauldron. I always do like to do a cauldron quite black, but I'm thinking let's do some greys and do it slightly differently so that um, it's not just really, really black, you know. So I'm starting with a greyish black and I think this is probably going to be my darkest. Let's get you in the middle a little bit more. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm thinking, if we look at this, we've got these lines here. This is where it's darkest, under the brim, inside. So we want a thick layer here. So layer it up. And then less coming down towards the contents, whatever might be in there. Our witch's brew. She's obviously, she's got her spell book above. She's, she's making some sort of concoction. It's quite fun. And uh, we need to think about what colour the uh, the potion's going to be. So keep a darkish line there. And hopefully it will make it look a bit more like this is a sort of overhanging. I think that's what um, what the idea is. This is sort of brim. There we go. Yeah, this is, if you're looking for a Halloween book, um, this one is cute, um, whimsical, and not at all scary. So that can be good for people who aren't into sort of scary, scary stuff like me. Um, I'm going to put a little bit on the edge here. I'm going to switch to a different grey soon, but I'm just going to mark out a few slightly darker areas and then um, go with a slightly lighter one. Yeah, I don't like scary Halloween. I mean, we've got the beauty of horror and we've got all those sort of gothic Halloween-y colouring books available. It's just not my bag. So uh, I am I appreciate this. I was I was bought this book, actually, given this book. And uh, this is as, as scary as I get, really. Um, I can cope with things like bats and spiders and, you know, like that. But that's because... They're not really Halloween-y. Like, uh, snakes, they scare me, but that's a whole different issue. We, we won't go into that today. I'm not going to do any snakes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I like something cute. And uh, I've also got um, quite a few Lulu Mayo books, and she has a lot of Halloween-y style um, things, witches and bats and things like that, and they're all really cute as well. Just gonna put a little bit of shadow under there, like that. Now I'm gonna pick up a lighter grey. Um, what was that? That was the greyish black. It's really quite dark. I think I'm gonna try this one. This is the mouse grey. There is another one sort of in between, but I think this might just work. But we'll see. If it feels a bit too light, I might have to grab the other one. Oh, I think that's working. Wow. What I want to do is to try and fade it towards the middle so we can give our cauldron a bit of a shine. Not huge, because I don't think it's made of silver, you know, so it's not going to be really but a sort of pewter colour, you know, it's quite nice. And um, where's the middle? About there. Just roughly guessing. It doesn't matter too much, but um, it's not going to be a really big shine, just a bit of a fade towards a slightly lighter area like that so it just yeah looks 
you know, just because she's a witch, why wouldn't she have her cauldrons looking nice and bright and shiny? So I'm going to do this little top bit first because it's just easier to, to do it in little sections and really the same as that bit, so fading it towards the middle. While I'm doing this, I'm trying to work out what this is. Got a bat there, but what are those? Are they just leaves? Autumn leaves, maybe? I'm not sure. Now, I'm going to do the bit above and then the bit below. That hasn't joined up. I'm going to just grab my darker grey, the um, greyish black, as it's called, and just um, bring that across to there. So it looks a little bit better. There we go. <clears throat> I've just been chatting with my boys. Both got into their classes. One of them's had his first lecture, his first proper lecture. He said it was he. The, his lecturer was Egyptian, and so her accent was reasonable to understand. But she's very deaf. <laughs> he said it was fine, but you had to really shout when you if you wanted to call out an answer. And then he's got her for a seminar after. So uh, he he's quite pleased with that. He said it was fairly simple, which he was hoping for to start with because he's doing a subject. He's doing business. He's not done that before. Um, I don't know what actually that particular... I think that was accountancy actually. Again, he's not done it before. So uh, I said I was just going to do the top bit and I've started doing the bottom bit. Never mind. And so, um, yeah, he was happy, so that was good. My other son was not happy. He's in his second week of classes. Um, for some reason, one had two weeks of induction. Anyway, and uh, he, um, his teacher is was still working on week one stuff, so basic, and he's getting really annoyed that it was so easy. I did try and explain to him that... Um, they have to start easy for people who haven't done it before, like his brother who hasn't done his topic before. Um, but he was like, oh, it's just... But then I sort of said to him, look, just, you know, stop, stop whinging about it. It's just, you know. And he said, oh, let me moan, Mum. I just want to have a moan. I was like, oh, OK. So I'm hoping he's OK, really, and he's just wanting to have a bit of a moan. We'll see. We'll see what happens as it goes on. He only messaged me first thing and then he didn't after. So I'm hoping that means that he's got into it. And Because last week during that particular class he was messaging me all the way through because he was really bored. So I'm hoping this week he's not so bored and he's actually got something to do. And uh, we'll sort of get, get his brain switched on, shall we say, a little bit more. But we'll see. I'm sure he'll tell me about it later. But... Uh, He's got, they've both got um, two different classes today. One of them's got a lecture and a seminar on one subject and then a lecture on the other, but his seminar's tomorrow. And one of them's just got two three-hour lessons. He doesn't sort of have, um, the one doing computing, they don't sort of do lectures and seminars, they just do a class, you know. Whereas the one doing business has a lecture, an hour and a half lecture and then an hour and a half seminar which may follow each other or not, like this one doesn't, does. Um, I think it depends. Half the class do the seminar straight after the lecture and half of them do it a bit later in the day, I think, because it's taught by the same person. She can't do teach everyone at once. I'm just going to tidy this up a bit before I move on to the legs. Quite happy with that um, sort of slightly dulled metallic look decided I might make the spoon or the handle a bit more shiny but I might not I don't know let's do this leg just and in there I'm not sure what I'm doing with the other one which is why I'm procrastinating um it'd be darker here wouldn't it so let's make it darker there do you hear my wrist click then it's weird can hear a noise outside, a humming noise. I'm trying to work out what it is. I've got no idea. It's some sort of um, machinery. I want that top bit there to be lighter. There we go. I'm happy with that. Oh, now this one. I 
And then we'll have a look at, I think we'll do the handle next. Hmm. Shall I use this colour or go slightly darker? I think this wound over bit could be like a, a leather, like a brown leather. I think I'll use keep with this grey for this bit and I'll go dark there and then a bit less so that we get a bit of a shine on the middle of the handle. Again, not madly shiny, just a little bit of a fade. I'm not sure what this is. I think it's just like something to stop the handle rubbing or something. I don't really know. I don't have a cauldron. <laughs> I think I'd just do it in the slightly darker greyish black and this. Um, let's make it dark there and a bit lighter there. A bit lighter there. Just a bit. I'm wondering whether to do this in grey or in brown. Mm, I could use like the Vista. I think I'll do that. Where is the Vista? Here it is. Vista. Right. Um, oh, I've got a message from my son. Ugh. He just said, my computer has just told me that my mouse has been disconnected even though it's on my desk. Lol. Well, I'm glad he's uh, having a laugh about it. <laughs> so I'm trying to make it a little bit darker underneath. There'd be more shadow under there. And a bit lighter as we go up. I'm going to re-emphasise that now. Just layer that up under there a bit more. And then I'm thinking there'd be some shadow here. So I'm going to actually get a slightly darker colour. Um, what should we use? Maybe the sepia would work. Oh, it doesn't want to come out. Uh, better answer my boy, hadn't I? Which put lol. Uh, uh, yeah, sepia. And what I'm thinking is under there, and then just behind, there and there. I'm thinking that's the middle one, but I think it just works, we just keep going like that. And we get a little bit of shadow, yeah, just a tad. Now this stick, now is it a stick? Is it a ladle? Is it silver? I want to do it silver, that's what I'm going to do. We've got some really liked greys. Mm. I think I'll use a little bit of grey to start with. Uh, like that. Then just fade it a bit and do the same at this end. And a little bit at each end of here. And then I'm going to go to a slightly lighter one. There's a colour called Steel Grey, which is a little bit lighter. And uh, just take it up. You can see this is a bit lighter. Like that. We can leave a bit of a shine there bluey colour isn't it almost there we go now we've got this piece here now I'm thinking these bats I'm going to do black um, I'm going to use the ivory black um, yeah ivory black so I'm just thinking and just block them in I think I'm just going to sharpen it There we go. I feel like these are like paper cutouts, so they'd be quite flat. 
but uh, you can interpret it however you wish. There we go. Just the same on each of them. Oh, do you think these are ghosts? Because they're upside down, aren't they? These bats are upside down. Hmm. I'm going to have a look around the picture in a minute, not while I'm colouring. See if there's any other clue. I'm assuming this one is a bat because the other end one is, but I don't know for sure. Um, I'm just looking around the picture. There's no clue. No. Okay, I think I'm just going to do them as autumn leaves. I might be really wrong. You might go, oh, but it's this, or yeah, whatever. I'm going to use the hazel. It's a really pretty orangey brown. Oh. <clears throat> okay. And uh, again, just blocking them in because um, I think they're paper cutouts. If you think it's a ghost, you might leave it white. I really don't think it's a ghost. I don't know why I said that. The noise I can hear is sounds like a street um, cleaner, road sweeper type thing. You know, those um, very slow electric machines that go along the roads picking up the leaves and things. It could be because when they unblock the drains on the main road it takes them a long time and they do have a uh, they have one of those with them. I'm going to grab a red, might seem a little odd, but for these little round pieces I'm thinking a red but maybe hmm, I'm thinking the English red might work it's a more orangey colour, more like a sanguine or a ochre, burnt ochre, even burnt sienna type colour. Trying to make it a bit lighter on the top. And by the way, I said I hadn't used these pencils on this paper before. This is an Amazon printed book, I think. So let me just check. You can look in the back. Yeah. It's, it's British though, so the paper is uh, the UK Amazon paper. I've had it for quite a few years, so paper may have changed. But it's, it's good. It's uh, The pencils are working nicely on it. And it's thin, and I've put some um, sheets behind it. I want to do a sort of normal red for the rest. I think I'm going to have to use the scarlet. There's a bit of a lacking of just normal reds in this set. Um, but there are some very, very pretty colours. But this is a good normal red. So, you know, we have got one. And like, I remember when um, the Stedler Ergosofts first came out, there wasn't a red. There was an orange and there was a pink. And you can mix them together to make a reasonable red, but it's nice to have a red. There we go. I just want it to stand out a little bit. And I need to do those bones. Now, bones, I'm thinking they're just white, but maybe I've got an ivory that I could use, or a cream. That's a white and a cream. I think I have to use the cream. So I don't want to leave them just white, but you probably won't even see it. There we go. And the potion, I would like to do a potion green or purple. Um, what colours have we got? I'm thinking the peacock green might work really well. Uh, there it is. This is our peacock green. Look at that. It's a good colour, isn't it? I'm not sure about those bubbles. I'm going to have a think. Perhaps they should be similar to this, but not the same colour. Doing that quite dark. 
And I'm going to get a slightly darker green. Have the opaline green. Is that a little bit too blue? Yeah, I think I have to use the greyish green instead. There we go, greyish green. My plan is to try and make the bubbles dark on the outside. A bit lighter in the middle so they look more rounded. So just put a layer around, go over it a few times. Then come in slowly, doing layers, a few less layers, a few less layers, and then nearly none. Takes a bit of practice, takes a lot of practice to be honest. And doesn't always work, but give it a go. Just takes a bit of time. I do this quite slowly compared to other colouring. I'm also thinking about this um, book behind us here and what colour to do the actual pages of the book but uh, we'll not worry about that now. I'm going to move along and move our witch and things into the middle a bit more. Um, I'm going to do this little brown bag. Um, we've got a colour called brown ochre if I can find it. Yeah. Where are you? Brown ochre. Uh, there it is, it's in the wrong place. Never mind. Brown ochre, and I'm going to use that for the paper bag as if it's a brown bag. I feel like it is a brown bag. There's a label on it. Mm. Now, do you think those are fangs or plants? <laughs> I think it's a spiky plant. Just trying to get a fairly even um, colour across the bag. Okay. Now, this side is a little bit darker than the front and I'm going to emphasise that a little bit more too because um, both sides wouldn't be the same. One side would be close to the light and would be a little bit uh, darker. Now I want to make these quite dark so I'm going to actually grab the spruce screen. It's pretty dark. Let's see if I can get it out. Because so I'm thinking they look like succulents, aloe vera, something like that. I can try and make the tips a little bit lighter, be easier on these slightly larger ones. I think they don't like the top bits on a pineapple. <clears throat> now, I did a page from this book last Halloween. Um, so if you're new to the book and you want to look, there's a little series. Um, it's actually the page, this page. So uh, yeah, if there's a bit more from the book if you want it. Um, the label, I think I might just do it in a darker brown. I don't want it to jump out and be anything too spectacularly exciting. So I'm going to grab the Van Dyke brown and just gently go over that a bit. Uh, it's just a label, it's nothing too exciting. Now we've got witchy, should we do witchy as well? I think we should. I'm going to keep that Van Dyke brown actually for her broomstick handle. Actually I'm not, I'm going to do the top of the broom with it. I'm thinking the handle might be slightly lighter, I don't know why. It's a pumpkin pie under the broom, I can see there. Can you see? Might be able to. Ah. I'm colouring in this direction because this is the sort of natural direction of the twigs of the broom, how they're drawn. 
and that bit I think would be a little bit darker. There we go. Now I'm going to use a lighter brown for the handle, something that's a bit more wooden. Um, I think I'm going to have to grab our brown ochre again. I do use the brown ochre a lot. It's a really versatile brown because it's fairly light but it's not too um, orangey. So there it is. I'm going to just go back to my Van Dyke and put a little bit on the edge just to give our broomstick a bit of shape. Not too much though because I don't want it to look too much darker. There we go. Now we need this little tie. I'm thinking um, I might just use the golden ochre for that. It happens to be nearby <laughs> and I think I like doing these sort of ones in a sort of goldish colour. I don't know why. Now which um, she has a pinafore dress. Uh, oh, all sorts going on. Let's find some nice colours. Let's go first. Hat. Um, let's do the hat. Oh, this is called lilac. I wouldn't call it lilac, but I think it'd be nice for the hat. Now we want a darker bit here. And it's going to make it a bit lighter as we come towards this side, I think. That will be the lighter side. It's not as easy to guess. You can use your light source as a... You can decide where your light source is and then just work with that. Um, which is what I sort of did with the bag below. I sort of made this bit lighter, so that bit sort of lighter over there. But also bits nearer to the top if you're assuming you've got a light above. And most rooms have a light, a ceiling light. There we go. And then the brim. I think it would be a bit more shadowy under the ribbon. And on each side there where it's sort of curving around the corner. I'm getting hungry. <sighs> Wasn't hungry earlier. And then I had something to eat and then I felt hungry. <laughs> oh dear. Now I I think yeah that's a little hole in the hat there. There we go. I'm thinking this bit's going to be a bit paler. So I'm just going to go back in here and make this bit darker. And then as I come around here I can make this bit a little bit paler. And I'm thinking under this ribbon there's going to be a bit of shadow so just darken it up a bit and then do that plant. There we go. Now the ribbon I thought we could just do in another shade. Um, should we, yeah, we'll use the periwinkle. Oh, I don't think that's going to match, actually. We'll use the mauve. Oh, it's a nice, um, it's really quite similar. But I don't know if that's dark enough. Different enough. Mm, no, I'm going to go over the top of that. That's no good. I'm going to use the violet. The violet is a really dark um, purple. That's what I was going to use to start with and then I changed my mind. But I think this is what I need. Look, that's what we need. Something that stands out. It doesn't matter that the other colours underneath. We'll cover it over. There we go. Now I'm thinking I want to use this colour again. Maybe, now I'm wondering whether this underdress and sleeves will be the same colour and the overdress will be different. Um, 
It wouldn't necessarily be the same colour as a hat or anything though, would it? But purples. Let's... Uh, what colour is that? Mm, yeah, let's use the periwinkle blue. Ooh, it's my elbow. The periwinkle blue. It's really pretty. And it's quite purpley. I think that will work nicely. I'm just going to give it a sharpen as I feel. It's a bit blunt. Just get a bit darker underneath. I'll do the same with this arm. A little bit darker underneath where there'd be some shadow. No, is she a mini witch or is that a giant spell book? What do you think? <laughs> I think mini witch is quite cute. But everything is her size. It's only the book that's big. Like, although those tomatoes are quite big. But the cauldron doesn't seem that big. I suppose it's about the same size as her, which is quite big. I'm just going to go all over this little dress part and then there'll be some bits I want to darken up a little bit at the end. So I'll do that in a bit. I'm wondering about these patches when I'm colouring what to do. There's a, this one looks like a heart shape, it's rather nice. Right, so thinking here, Nick, I'm going to go in there and up there. This is quite a deep crease. And then a crease there and there. And I'm thinking we'd have a bit of shadow underneath this little overdress. Or is it an apron, do you think? There we go. I'm going to put a little bit there and there too. Okay, we need to do our hands while I think about it. We have a colour called Granite Rose, which I think will just work okay for her hands. There we go. Now I'm thinking maybe a little pink. Um, maybe the mauve actually. Where's the mauve? There it is. Is that it? Yeah, no, that's purple. Oh, where's the mauve? Oh, we've used the mauve already, haven't we? This for the hat. So, no, we don't want that. Maybe the light purple. Where's the light purple? Trying to find it. The light is shining off my pencil, making it hard to see them. There we go. Light purple. It's quite a pinkish one. I think it'll just lighten the outfit a little bit. And then we might do the bow in a sort of, maybe in the purple. Think about it in a bit. Now the buttons to not colour. Quite difficult. It's quite a nice colour, isn't it? Seems to have been used a lot. Hmm. Um, oh, and that's, that's the light purple. I think the purple will work for the bow and the rest. Now when I do ribbons, I always do them a little bit darker near the knot, and I do the knot a bit darker at the bottom. And then a bit darker at the top of this piece. There we go. Oh, got that bit, bit darker there. 
Actually, I'm going to try and press a bit lighter on this bit. I want it to be a bit lighter. I would even be tempted to leave that white, but you know me, I don't like leaving things white. So we'll just put a little bit on it. And the buttons do with this colour as well. There we go. Now I've got these little bits of rag. Um, I'm going to use the... What's that colour look like? Purple violet. Yeah, I'm going to use the purple violet for this one. And the... Oh, I can't get it out. The aubergine for this one here. Reddish, this one, and then this one. Um, yeah, we'll use the royal blue. Why not? Now, I'm just going to redo the end of her bow where I missed a bit. There we go. And then we've got this little bit of greenery on our hair, hat and then we're going to make that do. Mm. Let's have a look. I'm thinking we want a bluish colour. Yeah, I think the Veronese green will do work well for that. I am just trying to check and see if there's any more of this in the picture because if there is, we'll want to do it the same colour, but there doesn't seem to be. And we'll be nearly done. There we go. Let's uh, bring it all into shot so you can see. There we are. So we have our cauldron and our witch. I feel like we need to brighten it a little bit uh, more somehow. But by the time we've done these tomatoes, that's going to make a bit of a difference. But uh, we'll have to see. It's got We've got a lot of little details, haven't we, coming up. So uh, I wasn't sure whether to do another video of this or not, or just to leave it there. But um, I may do more. I'll have a think but for now that's me so thank you very much for watching um, I hope you have a super day and happy colouring